Hey everybody, welcome to the Faith and Fandom Podcast. This is Hector, coming to you with the Artist's Alley Aftermath for the Fayetteville Comic Con Spring 2021 edition. This was the first Fayetteville Comic Con in person since, you know, the world went bananas. And it's the first Comic Con I've been a part of where, like, restrictions were lifted or just, you know, not mandatory. Oh, sorry. Um, so it was it was a different experience for sure. I was also coming in hot after uh, spending a week in Orlando uh, doing a Bible camp. And I finished my camp Friday at 3 p.m. And pulled in my driveway Saturday at 1 a.m. I then left for the con Saturday at 7 a.m. So I had like a four hour nap in between con or between getting home and leaving again. But it was a good show. Um, The one thing I'll say is that uh, Keith Gibbs, who put it together, did a great job organizing, putting this all together with all their with all the stuff that they had been dealing with. And getting it up together, you know, pulling it off on this level was something that was pretty freaking epic. There were less volunteers than accustomed to and probably necessary. But that's the thing. People banded it together. (sighs) Sorry, I've had a long day. Um, People banded together and Keith and his squad worked together immensely to... Just do some amazing things with this show. And I was really grateful to be able to be a part of it. Um, to my left was a Batgirl. Like, um, a lady who spent her youth as the, basically the backup Batgirl from Batman 1966. Where she toured around the country with Adam West and Burt Ward. And she lives in Raleigh. And she just published a book about it. uh, Bat Driven West. And um, it was just really cool having her beside us. She was a genuine sweetheart. And a nice lady. And so that was fun. Just seeing people that are into the older Batman and that classic stuff just really respond to her. And so that was fun all by itself. And this was literally her first con ever, ever. And so I was honored to be beside her for that. To my right was, uh, my friend LJ Bowens, who does the nerd slam and the poetry in motion for Fayetteville, North Carolina, a dope poet that, uh, just has his finger in everything in my region. And, uh, Directly across from us was a uh, doodle sweater cat, uh, which was uh, the cool art that I was beside in Greenville, South Carolina. So overall, great experience um, with that. Uh, had two Nerd Slam panels, um, but no Faith and Fandom panels per se for this event. Just simply a lot going on. <sighs> And, um, with everything going on with family and cancer and everything else, they weren't exactly, uh, planning on putting too much on me, but it was good. We had some, uh, tabling issues when we got there originally, but, uh, it all, it all got worked out pretty well. Um, Saturday was a fun day for it. You know, a good turnout, good experience. Um, Heading over to our Facebook page to uh, kind of check through some of the photos from that con specifically. Um, But man, I I, I had a really good time just being back in my hometown, being back with my people. One cool thing was that uh, Charles Kibbe, who if you are familiar with cons in our region, uh, was one of the legendary volunteers and leaders of kind of Comic-Cons overall. Charles passed earlier in this season, and 
his brother was actually giving out stickers and pins of Charles and Char he uh, Jeffrey came by my booth and gave me a sticker of Charles and I just saw him like hand me a sticker and I'm like cool cool I love stickers and then I saw that it was the man the myth the legend Charles Kibbe and I legitimately got choked up and <laughs> struggled to uh, hold it together um, sitting there not trying to weep in my vest of 40,000 pins in front of, you know, a small army of nerds. Um, so that was a thing was, uh, getting that pin from Charles was of Charles was a cool thing. Um, let's see. Uh, also, uh, I also made some decoupage art, which is not something I normally do, but, uh, I spent yeah, you know, as previously mentioned, I spent the week in Orlando, and my kids were campers, and I only spoke twice a day, so I made some decoupage art, which actually was pretty well received. And um, overall, uh, a few folks took hats home, which was cool. Made some snapbacks and some uh, athletic fit hats, uh, and also had some new stickers. Um, the uh, oh, where's my hairbrush sticker? Actually. <laughs> was a a big hit and um also had the Jesus loves you but don't be a douche sticker was pretty popular overall so it was just it was cool and was happy to just have those little things be some connections and I have to say I mean I know not everybody judges me by my candles but I really do feel like uh this uh this batch of candles were the best smelling um, would be the best smelling batch I've ever made. Um, this also marks, uh, the first con that I saw my first Sam Wilson, Captain America full on with the wings, which was really cool. There was an outstanding cosplayer that was, uh, out there on Saturday outside the panel where we were doing the nerd slam. And I literally just like interrupted the nerd slam to yell over the microphone that this dude's costume was amazing. Um, so there's a photo of that on the Faith and Fandom Facebook page, if you want to check that out. Um, saw some uh, more Lady Dimitrescu cosplays, and I think I saw two or three of them uh, while we were there, and it was there were some really great ones. So that was exciting. Um, after actually playing Resident Evil Eight, um, just left me a little disappointed. Um, not the whole game, but just Lady Dimitrescu's, uh, the length of her story. I was kind of sad, and I wanted a little bit more. And maybe there'll be more in the game. I'm still finishing it. Um, this game seems to be divided into five portions, and I'm heading towards the fourth. So we'll, we'll see how that plays out. Um, but, uh, Nerd Slam went well. Um, a young woman named Leo that, uh, was competing in... Harry Potter knowledge, uh, took home the gold. Um, there was a gentleman that was specifically battling over, a uh, Revenge of the Sith. So I had to come up with some good Revenge of the Sith questions. Uh, one of those would be like, uh, what color were General Grievous's lightsabers after the hello there General Kenobi scene, you know, that part when he whips out four lightsabers, what color were those lightsabers? Also, uh, like, what was the who was the first Jedi to die after Order sixty six, stuff like that, and uh, so there there are some good um, trivia questions and stuff like that. Had some fun Dragon Ball Z ones as well. So, uh, you know, had a good time. Had a good time with that um, Nerd Slam. But this was also the first Nerd Slam we've done without Carlos. Um, if you're aware that Carlos Kaysen, aka Cartier Jesus, um, a friend of ours passed while he was in Taiwan and Carlos and his wife, Kayla were usually my partners, um, doing nerd slam. But, uh, the young man that joined with us did a really good job in picking up the torch. Um, but it was a good time doing nerd slam and missed that. And it was, it was good enthusiastic, but I, I asked, um, there's a little kid that was competing, a little kid named Philip that was competing in knowledge of uh, Jurassic Park. 
And I asked a question, which I thought was a pretty basic question for a Jurassic Park fan. Um, like, uh, what was the shaving cream from the first movie that they smuggled the, you know, the stuff out in? And it's Barbasol. But I didn't think that, you know, Jurassic Park fans would know that. But this kid wasn't a Jurassic Park person, per se. He was a dinosaur person. Like, he could tell you the lifespan and all these crazy details about dinosaurs. So we switched this category over to that. Um, but overall it was cool. Oh uh, yeah. Speaking of reptiles or something close to reptiles, there was a snake, uh, booth a little bit across the way. So it was really cool to see different cosplay characters and stuff wearing <laughs> this giant yellow snake. So that was fun. I've got a really cool shot of a domino, uh, wearing a snake which is pretty cool. And the coolest shirt of the con award goes to a gentleman who was wearing a Wu Tang shirt, but instead of Wu, it has Ric Flair doing the Wu face. So it's a perfect shirt and that as well as on our Facebook page. Um, it was just a good experience seeing a lot of the stuff going on. Uh, I, I had a blast with it. Um, and got to have some great conversation, several like youth pastors and youth ministers and stuff that uh, we wanted to pass the stuff on to. And I had to leave my booth for a minute to uh, go do Nerd Slam. Um, and one of the things that happened was my friend John watched my booth then. And he said that that 45 minutes that I was gone or hour I was gone were like some of the best times he's had in ministry of just talking to people. So I missed a few folks, including some people that bought some books. Um, but uh, I, I, I hear things were in good hands. Um, also, I had some cool friends come and visit uh, my friend Deborah, um, who is a cosplayer and theological scholar came and hung out and was a very impressive snow white for some folks um my friend amanda spear from atlanta uh came on her way back from a trip to clayton north carolina so i got to hang out with some friends that i've known for a while and that was cool also had some friends uh just you know lots of local friends stop by as well as some church family so that was neat um just being able to see people that i don't always get to see and do that um i also had a guy there's a guy that was dressed like uh the older gentleman from uh return of the jedi uh who through dave filoni's inspiration has been turned into captain rex and we had a discussion about that which was pretty cool um overall though i had a good experience with it but it was it was really really nice to just be back in Fayetteville at a con. It was really cool to be back in that experience and doing those things. Um, I had some, I had some good conversations. Um, and Sunday morning, you know, I went by my church building to, uh, make sure everybody was good to go before we started off. And, um, You know, it was just one of those things. I was a little late getting to the con because I was uh, checking on people and trying to put out fires. And it was also Father's Day. And um, I didn't do any Father's Day, like, sales or giveaways or anything. It was just, there was just a lot going on. But it was it was just a good experience to be able to do that. Um, there will be another Fayetteville Comic Con in October. And I am very much so looking forward to that. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's about it. I mean, it was, it was a good show. It was a good two day show. Um, I feel like attendance was good. I talked to some different artists who, uh, had good days. Not everybody had their best days, but you know, not every day is going to be your best day. And the reality is like the, a lot of the folks that did Greenville, South Carolina for South Carolina Comic Con, that actually was like a phenomenal show and probably one of my best shows in two years so coming off of that to a good show doesn't mean it's bad it's just you know a different speed um but i think you know a lot of folks are just kind of like 
waiting for things to blow up again and be good because they've had such a hard season. But it was really nice to do that. Also, uh, Nurse Joy from uh, Pokemon was there, the original Nurse Joy, um, as well as the motion actors for Mortal Kombat and Mortal Kombat 3, um, which was really cool. Uh, Sonya, Unmasked Sub-Zero, the original Kano, and uh, Sindel. So it was it was pretty neat just to see those folks. And those folks are in ridiculously good shape. Um, I was also right by Lex Luger, the wrestler. And, uh, you know, I grew up, you know, seeing this dude all the time on TV. So it was, it was neat to see him. And, you know, he's an older gentleman now and he's in a wheelchair. So it's, it's, a, it's different just seeing what life looks like, you know, in these seasons. The people you literally grew up seeing as heroes on TV is time and age has been a factor with that um my kids did not come with me to this show at all um because we just went to camp and they didn't want to spend two more days sitting with me but it was it was good um the next show that on my current brain that i'm aware of that we're having will be uh um Greenville Comic Con in Greenville, North Carolina, because uh, I had to cancel my appearance for Galaxy Con Raleigh just because it conflicts with a summer camp that I've already committed to like a long while ago. So, no bitterness towards that or anything. I hope it's a great show, and I'm actually going to do my best to stop by, but uh, won't be able to be there for that one. I also got to see my friend Amy Delich. Del- Amy D. I'm a mess up her name. Um, from Raleigh. She's normally part of our Raleigh shows, but she came down for Father's Day with her dad um, and to meet Batwoman or Batgirl. And it was great to see her. Uh, and D, uh, miss you if you are listening to this as well. And uh, got it was cool to see Mac from Kessel Run Comics, which is one of our local com- comic shops we go to as well. And, you know, it's. Um, crazy things because it's a local show there's a lot of people that i haven't seen since high school and so staring across at 40 year old people that you last saw at 18 it's a weird funky deal it's a weird funky deal um so i'm gonna get off of here in just a second so thank you for taking your time to listen but before we go i want to uh take a moment to uh thank our patreon supporters um and we've got you know a, a handful more since the last time i recorded so awesome uh so, giving shout outs to Patreon supporters, ready, set, go. Mike Perna of Inroads Ministries, super cool dude, does a lot of cool things. Todd Turner of Mosaic Fan Art, um, great guy. And he makes really <laughs> ridiculously good, like, uh, sculpture things with mosaic pieces. And you should definitely check his stuff out. And if you go back to the podcast, we did one with him recently. Um, Jonathan Jacobs. Um, who is my friend and goes to church with me and stuff and great dude with that. Zach Harris, who is a pastor friend, actually was the first person I know to run a, a church comic con. Caleb Grimm is an old friend and person I did ministry with at summer camp. Miss Jeanette Skaggs, who is the coolest con mom I know. Chris Poyer, who was also running a big uh, event this past weekend, um, doing some cool ministry. Uh, Chris Cook of One Cross Radio. Um, hope you're doing well, dude. Jason Bullock, a filmmaker out of North Carolina. Uh, Christina Ray is a cool lady that I met at Con, and her son and her are super dope. Um, Sarah Lewis, who is a vlogger and a writer of her own right, and some does some great things. Um, uh, Miss Rebecca Godlove, who is a podcaster and theatrical wizard and all the things that she is cool lady adam davis who does some really cool uh art and colorations on instagram stuff it's pretty neat stephanie schwan who uh does some dope ministry like in person in the world and uh i'm honored that she supports this as well so to all of those who are patreon supporters thank you so much for being a part of this and uh if you are interested in supporting us uh, on Patreon and the ministry that Comic-Cons will be going out in the near future. Um, feel free to do that. We have some cool new uh, 
some cool new tiers where you can get stickers or be on a podcast or different stuff like that. So uh, just want to say thank you for being supportive, being cool, and taking time to listen. Um, I hope that the things that you geek out about bring you joy and that your true joy is found in Christ and that you have a great day. <laughs>